Well, first of all, everybody happy 2022. Um, we made it. And uh, I know that in, in our business, and I think everybody's business, um, man, has at times have changed over the last couple of years. And, and 2021 was a whirlwind and 2022 looks to be uh, more of the same. Obviously, we've got a lot of supply chain issues and I know everyone has um, the same uh, supply chain issues and also people issues and things like that. But there seems like there's a lot of growth. I was just sharing with somebody the other day that uh, at least in regards to last year, I felt like every person, every business person or owner that I met uh, and talked to kind of had the same, just they had a record year. Um, so it was kind of interesting that, that, that just interests me a lot. I'd love, a matter of fact, there are some people on this call I'd love to just chat with about that offline and get your thoughts as to why, but, um, but we're excited about this year. We, uh, the partner series had a lot of success, a lot of good feedback last year. So we're really excited to sort of run it back, um, this year. And we're, we're pretty well booked out for the whole year. Um, and excited to have Bailey here with us today with cap space and, um, uh, one, one thing I wanted to point out, you guys may have seen it in the email, something we're going to be doing new this year, something we're calling the Artisan Series. Um, we released a few last year. I think one was Refresh Glass, and, and Brett can correct me if I'm missing a, another one. We've got, um, and I think maybe there was, Danique was one that we did as the notebook supplier. Um, but basically what we realized is that there are some very specialized suppliers out there uh, kind of with niche products. Um, and just frankly, sometimes just really cool stuff that we want you to know about that are, um, and I think the way I've been describing it is like when you build a new house, you know, every house needs a drywall or a plumber, a roofer, an electrician, but not every new house needs, you know, somebody to build, you know, a custom uh, wood feature or a stone uh, feature or something, you know, you might use them on a few projects. And that's kind of how we see the artisan series is our ability to present some of these really specialized suppliers that have things in some cases that we don't, we don't necessarily know how you would use them, um, but we just think you need to know they're um, um, available. Uh, Brixelated is one that comes to mind, which is kind of more of a partnership. So keep an eye out for those. That's that's the only reason I bring that up, uh, not to get too far off track here, but that's something we're excited about for this year. But back on track for partner series. Um, we got Bailey with us today from Cap Space. Um, and, and I just wanted to say the reason, you know, custom headwear is, uh, there's a lot of places out there where you can get custom headwear and it can be a little overwhelming uh, to try to do when, because when everything is possible, it can feel like nothing's possible. And so one of the, so why do we bring a custom headwear supplier onto the partner series when we've had access to them for a long time? And I mentioned to Bailey yesterday that the reason there's really three reasons. One is, um, first of all, uh, Bailey and her team, I we feel and we have seen, and hopefully you all have seen who have participated and gotten some samples. They just have an eye for design. Some of the designs they come up with are really good. And, and, and I think really, um, complement what we want to do here at Goodson really well. Secondly, is they've simplified the process, which she'll talk about here. So it takes something that's pretty complex and, um, and simplifies it. Uh, and finally, just quality that we found that there are a lot of import or uh, custom headwear companies out there, but the quality is not always, uh, you know, where, where you'd want it to be. And, and we've just found that the hats that they produce are really high quality, you know, on the level with like a Richardson retail brand and, and things like that. So, um, I'm excited for her to kind of present to you. I know uh, one thing I do want to also address, and I'll stop talking here soon, I apologize, is we did uh, kind of promote this early in December, saying that we wanted sample hats to be in hands with everyone who kind of uh, reached out to us. I think that happened for a few. I know David with Wirecrafters, I know MCM, uh, and maybe a handful of others. But I also, as I understand it, know that everyone else, everyone who did respond early did at least get photos of their hats and those will be coming in the next week or two, which Bailey can speak to in a second. So we're excited for you guys to uh, get those and then start the process of providing some pricing and lead times. And, 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 and again, I'm sure she'll speak to, you know, we're right in the middle of trying to use your year to lead times, maybe in the near future versus the mid to long term. So with that, um, everybody, I want to introduce you to Bailey Bradford and uh, take it away. Oh, thank you, Landon. That was a great introduction. Um, yeah, so I'm here just to kind of talk about the custom headwear side and then to address some of the things that Landon talked about. Um, on the custom side, sometimes things can take longer depending, like if the sample gets damaged and then they have to remake it, there's just some little things that do happen. And I like to be very transparent when it comes to those things. Um, and then Landon did talk about Chinese New Year, which I'll just address really quick before we just hop into the presentation. 
Um, Chinese New Year happens every time around January, February. Like for us, our fabric supplier um, closed a couple days earlier than our factory did, which means that we can't get fabric to make our hats. So sometimes like our lead time during Chinese New Year is a little bit longer, especially with COVID. I was telling this to Brett yesterday, sometimes factory workers like leave and it's like a four day commute to get home. So long story short, um, Chinese New Year should end around February 8th, but it will be like probably like the 15th when all of our staff is back, ready to go and um, get, the, get the ball rolling. Most times our production time is about 40 days. And then samples will usually take 10 days for an image. Um, and then we ship all of our orders door to door. So um, that means air freight's included. It's, everything is included in the price, which is great. And it gets shipped to you. So it's a pretty easy process. And I'll, I'll just hop right into that. And um, well, one thing I want to jump on and say, and, and something that's interesting is that some of, the, some of the headwear suppliers out there that are even doing things domestically, what we have found in the past is, you know, importing headwear was going to be a, you know, eight to 12 week on in normal times, you know, eight to 12 week process, something like that, probably pushing 12. But some of the suppliers we're working with now, even doing things domestically, uh, have similar lead times. So what's interesting about, I think, and, and something that I would want everyone on the call to keep in mind is that where in the past, it might have been a significant additional lead time to work with cap space it's become a situation where it's very in line um, with at least some of the branded options out there to where it, it probably needs to be considered right along those things, just given the fact that in some cases, believe it or not, it's hard. I mean, I talked to a brand that probably a lot of people on this call would recognize a, a week ago, they produce everything in Pennsylvania and they are eight to 10 weeks out. So the point is just simply that this option becomes relevant in terms of lead time where in the past it would have been longer. Especially with like the air freight door to door, um, it really cuts down that lead time that used to be used to be an extra three weeks or now with um, ocean freight it can be six weeks um, like our production was at 30 days because of COVID is 40 and like Leanne said like that is significantly shorter than some suppliers who do things domestically so I see something in the chat oh probably that was from Landon um, all right I was so just posting to make sure everybody knew if they had something they wanted to ask or say to punch okay. it in there um, Ross, do you mind making me the host by chance? I think I might have to do that. Hang on one second. Oh, that's a problem. Uh-oh. All right. Hold on. I can well, actually, you know, Ross, this name it made it available to share. Multiple people can share at the same time. There we go. Thanks, Ross. Perfect. All right. Okay, perfect. So um, really what Landon said, we've really tried to hone this in to make this as easy as possible. Um, we like to say it's made to order because sometimes full custom seems a little daunting like Landon said. Um, so what happens is you send the artwork to Landon, I get renderings going, you decide if the renderings are perfect, we wanna move to sampling, if you want revisions and sometimes like we just go back to the drawing board, which is just A-OK -okay as well. Sometimes that does happen and that's, that's not a problem at all. Um, and then we go to sampling. So I'm just gonna give you an example of one of the projects that we did for this partner series, um, the examples through Wire Crafters. Um, so I'll just- And Dave was on the call, so I didn't tell him we were doing this, so hopefully he's okay with it. Yeah, ho hopefully it's okay, David. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's fine by me. I'm wearing the hat right now, actually. It's a little too late if it isn't though. So to be very true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so let me go back to here. So Landon shoots me over an email. Sometimes it's just as simple as this. Um, he'll send me a website URL or he'll send me social media links. Um, that way I can really dive in to understand your company a little bit more. So seeing if you're family owned, if you're veteran owned, if you're woman owned, when you're established here. So then that way we can tailor the designs of our hats to be more in line with the values that you have. Like it's very easy to place a logo on a hat and call it a day, but I think it's important to add a little bit more of what makes your brand so unique and so special. Um, and then he'll send me a Dropbox link or he'll just attach the files with your artwork, pretty simple. And then he provides me with the PMS colors that are necessary. 
So for wire crafters, it, he just provided me one of their logos, which is, which is great. I'll check the artwork to make sure that it's okay to go for renderings. If not, you'll probably get another email from Landon to send more artwork. And then I respond back with Landon. I take usually 24 to 48 hours for renderings, depending on the week. Sometimes they get a little bit crazy, but we try to stay within that standard time frame. So I email um, Landon, I send him the Dropbox link with the files. Um, and then I sometimes if it's a little bit out of the box, I explain why I got where I got. So I'll go to my Dropbox link here. Are you guys able to see that link or is it still on the presentation? I only, I only still see the presentation here. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna just have to quickly. And one thing I would, I, one of the things just to kind of reinforce while you're doing that, the, the design point is, I think that's something that I really appreciated when I saw some of the concept designs come over to me was even, I have to admit, there were some elements I saw in some of the designs that were like, oh, I didn't realize 1967 was significant for, you know, and she had done her homework to do that. So that's very consistent with our values. So here you'll see with the Dropbox link for Wirecrafters, usually I'll do two to three depending on the scope of the project and depending on how much artwork is provided. Um, but so like here, I'll click into the first one just to confirm you guys can all see this, right? You'll see that you guys can see the rendering through Dropbox. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I know I can. Yep, we got it. Awesome. Um, so with the renderings we do, I haven't really mastered more of like the 3D effect on most things. But here you'll see um, an embroidered patch. This is double surged edge, which that's a lot of mumble jumbo. And I'll show you some of our decorating techniques after we go through these steps. Um, but you'll see the 67, the established year, and then this little helmet um, because Wirecrafters is a wire partition company. And I saw in some of their promo videos that all of their um, employees and workers were wearing um, welding helmets. So I was able to find this logo and pop it in because I thought it was a nice touch. And then you'll see all the description of kind of what's in the hat, um, especially with that 2D effect. It's kind of nice to know kind of more of what it is. Um, and then every hat will come with a private label logo, which you see here, Wirecrafters, which we can talk about the import. I'll talk about the importance of private label after like in a couple more slides. And then we'll go here, which I added this to the patch to the front of this hat. And again, we just scroll down. You can kind of see all the examples here, which you see, I sometimes I miss stuff. I'm, which is okay, and then I'll get that updated, but you can see here I missed the front logo with what matches the hat. Ultimately, Wirecrafter, Wirecrafters went with the third option. Um, right now, it looks like a really flat logo, but if you scroll down, you'll see in the description that it's actually 3D embroidery, which a lot of people call it puff embroidery, which gives it that raised 3D texture um, onto the hat instead of just like a flat logo. And then we at, he wanted to keep the 67 for the established year. So let me just stop sharing and then I'll show you um, the sample and how it actually came out. So then this is how the sample ended up coming out through fruition. So we got the artwork, we did the renderings and then we sampled. Um, and this is how the sample ended up turning out. So I wanna, uh, I just wanna comment here and, and because this is one thing that struck me about this project. And, and again, I didn't, you know, I, I'd, I'd be curious not to put David on the spot, but I'd be curious just if he felt the same way. But my feeling was, <clears throat> you know, you see those flat renderings and they're fine. They look cool. Um, but I'll be honest, when when I saw the one on the right, I thought, eh, you know, it's it's nice and, and looks, you know, pretty cool. And, and, and we'll see. But I wasn't wowed by it, maybe like I was on some other things. But, you know, and and we went with it. And then when the actual hat came in, I remember... I opened it up and I think I even said this to the to the folks in the office I was like man I said this turned out way better than I anticipated uh loved the 3D uh, embroidery and things like that so David I'm just curious you don't have to I'm not trying to lead you be honest but you know you saw the renderings obviously and then you got the product I know we haven't really decided how we might use the product going forward but how did you feel I mean were you pleasantly surprised at what actually showed up yeah, I think, uh, like you mentioned, I, I was shocked to see how nice the, the 3D embroidery was. Um, it feels really nice. It looks good. Um, and I love the, you know, the 67 on the back. We're 
So we're a family owned company uh, here in Louisville and it's been family owned since 1967. So we, we take a lot of pride in that. And I think that's kind of a cool little touch on the back of the hat there. So good. Yeah. So anyway, just, and I think I point that out just to say that something that looked pretty simple in a, in a rendering actually even turned out uh, to be something that I was like, man, this is when I got it in person, I thought, man, I'm really excited to send this to David. So, so well done, Bailey. Oh, thank you. And David, we definitely put you on the spot. So I appreciate it. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. It's a, it's a very nice hat. I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do with it. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I appreciate all positive and negative feedback too. So any feedback is, is great. So that was the process. We try to make it very simple because I'll show you some hat and examples after this. Um, there's tons of fabric options, but we really try to make it as easy as one, two, three, so you don't have to think about it. Um, our minimums are 144. Like I said earlier, it includes air freight door to door. And at, right now our production is at about 40 days, give or take. Bailey, and then, and you, I think you mentioned this earlier. Did, did you say that 40 days does include delivery? So that's like total time or that is just production? So that's just production. And I okay. usually say about seven days for delivery. Got it. Um, especially after Chinese New Year, there is so much stuff waiting yep. in the port to leave. Um, okay. But so the private label, which I think is so incredible about our hats that makes us different is, again, especially during COVID, I think your brand speaks more volumes, especially making it through those hard times. Your brand is valuable and, and people respect it or else you, you wouldn't have made it out of COVID basically. And I think having your hat have a private label really elevates your brand to the next level. Um, so all of our hats will have that tear away made in China label um, on it, but you can do multiple different things with it. So on the screen, there's an example of one that somebody did as just like a mini, um, like a mini business card. So it's just another touch point. If you are on the retail side, it's great. If you put a discount code, you can kind of track within um, your headwear, whatever that discount code back on your website to see those touch points. Um, the other thing I do suggest is let's say you're giving them out to employees or some of the top um, buyers who let's say wire crafters, if you sell it to a client or you give it to them after a big project, sometimes it's nice to be on um, being able to bring that discount code back for not only your product, but maybe your wearables. Um, obviously branding is so important. And if somebody buys your piece, it's, they're just a walking billboard for you. So I think it's important to just make your promo items or their giveaway items or your wearables, just to have that nice extra little touch point, especially for us, it's included in your hat. So it's just kind of, why not? Um, Landon, do you have anything to add to that or? No, I just, I think that one of the ways I look at this kind of thing is like, you know, you can do the private label and then you also have like things where you can do custom taping inside the hat, which I think I kind of even see in the background there. They probably have their logo stepped and repeated on the taping or, you know, there's all those little custom elements that if, if the timeline allows and the budget allows, um, you know, it, you know, obviously there's going to be promotional hats that, that, you know, will price out in a way or need to be priced out in a way that don't work for this type of use case that, uh, but if the if the timeline allows and the budget allows, I think this is a great option because it it allows you to take that hat to the next level and customize it just that much further to where it's not, for all intents and purposes, a co-branded hat. It's not a Nike hat. It's not an Under Armour hat with your logo on it. Which there's a time and place for that. Um, but yeah, I love I love the subtle ability to do these customizing features. Perfect. Um, so that was we kind of went through the process and then how you order. Um, I just wanted to go through when you, like the three basic categories that we have to offer as well. So when I talk about cap space fit, so although we don't have any quote unquote stock here in the US, we do offer to make it simple, like the fits that we have done, we have mastered that you can pick from. So our Pops Cat is your normal low profile. Our corporate curve is just basically the standard hat you see out. Um, so they're just kind of options that we offer to make this process easier as well. If you, if you don't have a hat that you want to duplicate, like you're like, I love the Richardson 112, or I love that new era fitted hat, um, then at least we have a good starting point for you. Um, or we can go into full custom. So we have some weird requests quite frequently. 
Um, so this was a hat, like a railroad hat that this client wanted to do. We could do the fleece back. You can untie these and then make them flaps. Um, we've done it where there's, it's more of just a flat back on the back. Um, this hat, it may not look that custom, but this person wanted to incorporate a side pocket within this panel that you can see on the right side. Um, and that's a removable patch on the front, right? Right. So that's a Velcro patch that you can um, remove and take off. So sometimes what clients like to do is embroider underneath that. And I can show you guys some examples of that so that it can give you two different looks on one hat. Or if you have a patch that you love, um, it really comes from the military. So if you wanted to like switch it out, put a United States flag on it or whatever it may be. Bailey, would it be fair to say that in a lot of instances where you get <clears throat> what I would characterize as a highly custom situation like this or the, the hats that you showed in images before, that a lot of times it's mm -hmm. somebody coming to you and saying, hey, I saw this or I received this and I really like it. Or they come to you and say, maybe they've gotten a few different hats and they're like, I got one with a pocket on the side, which I thought was really cool. And then I got one that has a removable patch, which I really like. And then the next thing you know, you kind of start piecing together things that they've received or seen is that, you know, when you get, when you get outside of maybe that kind of process we went through for the samples, which was sort of like, Hey, we're just going to make this easy for you. Do you want to, you know, a trucker style? Do you want this style? And then give me the, the logo and stuff. When you move over into more custom, is that kind of how it works? Yeah. So um, for like this, the hat you see on the screen, their client has gotten this hat a long time ago and they wanted to bring it back because they're, they have a lot of Canadian branches, so it's pretty cold. Um, so they were like, yeah, I would really like this hat. And we replicated it pretty much. But this one, this is full custom. This isn't something we've done before. So it takes a little bit longer for our factory to create and develop this hat um, to get where it is now. Um, and then like the same thing with the zipper hat. So this is for a dispensary um, and they've done stash socks and they wanted to do a stash hat. So we had to get creative and it took a little time to develop if the zipper was subtle enough. And so that's an example of where you're talking about Landon. Like that was somebody who's like, I have this product with a zipper. Can we do it with a hat? And then we have to figure out how to do the zipper with the hat. Um, so it where, just takes longer and sometimes there's probably some back and forth with materials and samples. I mean, you just got to kind of lock in for a little bit longer process for something more and more custom. Right. I, and one question I have about this that really isn't necessarily on topic, but like for a, for a hat like that with a with a removable patch, mm -hmm. I, have you done projects where people come to you and say, hey, I want to do a hat like that. And I want to do right out of the gate. I want to give people three or four or five different patches that they can kind of cut, decide, you know, and they get the hat with like a pack of five patches. Yeah, we could do something like that. Um, I know that there is a minimum for patches and that would be yeah. something I have to confirm, but I'll make a note of that. But that is something we've done, like for the Nutrient brand, we've done some hats with the American flag and some with the Canadian flag. And then that way they, they can kind of like replace them. Um, here's an example of one of our um, hats with the Velcro patch where they've done it on the front and there's one on the side too. So if you wanted more of a basic hat to wear, or I know there's like, it's um, four, it's like TAC IH or something or 411 and they do a bunch of the patches like for the police force and you can buy them and then replace them. So we can do specific size patches. So if you do already have patches, we're able to, it can be like transitioned in and out. Um, but on the full custom side, like this is a kid's hat, a kid's little bucket hat that we can do all over sublimation. And it's also reversible. So you can see the sluggers on the front. So that would be kind of full custom too in regards to making it reversible, um, that all, all over step and repeat hat. And then like, here's one we did, we sampled for the Chicago Bulls. And this is artwork. Sometimes I can create the artwork, but this artwork was provided to us. So when it comes to full custom, um, like this would be artwork that we would get from Good Center from you. We've also had um, like the outdoor sun hats, like the bigger bucket hats. And again, here's the 3D embroidery. So those are kind of on the more of the, I would say the custom side, but yeah. you can get even more custom. I really personally, I, you know, I, I've gotten into, 
rucking and stuff and rucking is they're big with like patches you know when you do different events and things like that so i just kind of find myself liking this idea of swapping patches out you know that approach at some point especially people used to do a lot of hats for like the year yeah um and then COVID hit and then people are like wow i might be stuck with 2020 hats for a really long time um so it's kind of nice that you're able to swap them out um, and then we also do knit hats. So that would be like the third category. So the first category, just to reiterate, was like we could duplicate or you could take it kind of from our category of quote unquote stock options that we offer. Um, the second would be that, that full custom. And then third, we do knits. Um, we have super high compliance. We do stuff for the Disney, Disney store. Um, our hats are also manufactured on the same store that Marymount hats are made out of. Um, what made us win this project was this feathering that you see um, right underneath the pom-pom, but right above Chicago. Um, I guess a lot of other hat factories couldn't do that. Um, we could just do your standard beanies and then I'll stop sharing and then show you a couple others. So like this is a racing hat that I consider our stock hat um, because it's already created and we can just like pop your logo in. Here's another one again with that feathering jacquard it in and we could do tons of colors for the pom-pom so this one has three or four and then we also do these reversible beanies as well so here you'll see the rolls royce logo um it's a little hard to see on zoom but we can do the tone on tone jacquard in and then again with that reversible effect some we can do a different color on the back with that reversible patch and then that light heathering for another RR. So you get basically two hats in one. Was that um, tone on tone? Is that a screen print or is that woven in as well? It's woven in. Gotcha. So they're forever. Um, again, this one's a little bit softer. It's a little harder to see, but this one has a little bit of wool in it where like this hat is 100% acrylic. So depending on your budget, um, we can offer 100% acrylic if you have a little bit more of a budget. Um, the wool, it has a way softer hand to it. Um, Are the knits 144 minimum quantity as well? Yeah, 144. And similar lead times? Mm -hmm. Yep. And especially like on lower um, parts of the year, like they're like September, August is like high point for buying knit hats, which I know would be surprised, but people need inventory. Um, so we can um, get them a little bit quicker sometimes too. But just to show some examples of hats, of just some of the patchwork for some more of like the detailed looks. Can you do a custom hat work on the other hand? Oh, okay. Um, so Chuck, that's a great question. Um, if you, he asked if you do a custom hat for a company, is that added to your portfolio of options or do you keep it exclusive to the customer? Um, so we, if I'm, there's a couple ways to answer this. So. If Goodson brings it to us, like we do that brand with Goodson. Um, if you don't mind, it's like kind of re, re asking your questions, so I can better answer it. Yeah. So uh, basically, is there an unofficial IP to the design, or is saying, hey, this client did something really, really cool? Same thing, Lana, hey, this company over here that is really cool. You know, is it, do you ask them, hey, this turned out really great. Do you mind if I share this as an option? for others or is it like, no, we created this custom. We don't want, you know, everyone else to have the same, same hat. So you keep it, you know, that design exclusive to that company. Yeah. So at this point, we don't have any exclusive options that we offer. Um, we would, if that was something that was important, we would sign a contract to get that instated. But as of right now, we don't. So like for the zipper hat, um, we don't have anything that's signed with like Cresco and Sunnyside. So we can offer that to other people, but if they want an exclusive right, we would just have to go down that path. It's not something we're opposed to, um, but just not something we've been asked before. I don't know if that helps answer. That's that. a great question. I mean, I hadn't really ever thought about that, Chuck, but, you know, depending on to what level you customize something, you know, wanting it to be truly unique. Um, yeah. So that's, I mean, that, that's a great point. I think to Bailey's point, if that were the case and we customize to that level, and it probably would come down to, you know, design features, you know, the good example probably being like that side pocket and uh, we just have to have that discussion, but great question. Yeah. Cause it, it kind of would have to go down that 
like more of a patent route at that point. And it's depending on what we want to do with that. So I, did that help Chuck? No, that was great. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then uh, my other, my other question was basically you were showing the different, like kind of winter woolen hats. Um, and I, I've seen some that are kind of popular now that's really almost looks like your Grammy crocheted, like with the fuzzy belt at the top, a much thicker stitch type of hat. Um, so this one. Yeah, like that, or even a bigger, um, um, bigger weave. Like the the yarn is a lot oh, bigger. Yeah, we can do those. Okay, I that's sort of the question. Examples. So, and like <laughs> obviously, with something like that, the only thing would be that you're when you go with a wider or bigger weave, it, you you're sort of like, for lack of a better way to describe it, your design gets more pixelated essentially because if you have just gets more bulky, right? Like from the standpoint, if you do it as a weave. I guess. Right, you kind of customize it by the color of the, the yarn used yeah. and then it almost is like a patch that you have to put on yeah. it or something. Or yeah. Some kind of right. woven label or something to make sure, yeah, yep. So like this hat, we can jacquard like all of the stuff that you're looking for into it. With the specific cable knit hat that you're talking about, we couldn't do this pattern in that, um, but we would do a patch or woven label like Landon said, we would just have to decorate it a little different. Or like mix a bunch of colors, like I mean, yeah, yeah. So that that and then put a label on, it. yeah. That's that's a pretty cool idea. Um, and then just some like other hats that we've done. Um, we've done them from Screwball. We could do the acid wash. Um, a lot of people like to incorporate the American flag, um, in their logo, so we can stop and repeat. We could do what we did for MGM. And then other popular hats would be just like the herringbone fabric as well. Um, but yeah. Oh, so this is the Torxil hat that I showed for the example with the private label. Um, Landon mentioned um, the step and repeat on the taping. So just to show you that, we also can do the woven patch on the back that covers the plastic strap that gives it a, more of an elevated look. And then this is a, an embroidered surge edge patch. So surge edge means it just like I can put my finger here and it gives it more of a textured look. And then they also did embroidery under the visor. And then again, the American flag. That so, thing had to do with the kitchen sink, I think. Oh, yeah. This, this is pretty much as much decorating as you can get that I say is tasteful, but everyone's taste is a little different. So I, I do want, I know if I were on this call, one of the things I would be wondering, and I, you know, I, I haven't worked on a, a knit project with Bailey, so I may not be able to kind of give you an idea on the price unless she could give me a nod that the pricing on the knits is at least in the ballpark with the hats um but you know if I again if I were on this call I'd probably be okay Lane the 144 minimum like what you know what kind of money are we talking and I can tell you the projects we've sold with them have been in 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 you know again custom so this can change based on how you customize your hat but they've they've been in that probably 12 to 15 dollar per hat range some somewhere in there um and yeah. obviously go kind of up, but you know, just to give everybody a you know a bit of a ballpark, and and I and I say that only because, you know, there are some situations where there might be more of an appetite for what I would call a more promotional hat that might get into the five to ten dollar range. You know, I would say this is probably more suited to your upper middle to higher tier, you know, higher quality type type hat, and that and that would give you some instant. You know, now you should have some ballpark idea of lead time, uh, minimum quantity and pricing. So. Yeah. Um, and to go off of that, a lot of those pricing are in that 144 range, which is our minimum. So whenever on the custom side, when you get to the 500, 1,000, 5,000 quantity, which is obviously sometimes just like not in the company's, like what it's their scope is. Yeah, but, but, but it does bring the price down. The, the quantity increase would then drive the price down. Yeah. yeah, especially on the full custom. So, and then for larger quantities, we can ocean too, which will bring the price down as well. But um, for most of our hats, we do air freight door to door. And then just- That would probably hats. take the, that would take delivery time from seven to 10 days, probably to 30 plus days, something. I mean, just in right. terms, right? Correct. So you're looking at, you know, 50 day lead time to get them in by air and probably a 75 to 90 day lead time if you go by ocean to save some cost. And then just to kind of look at our website here um, with just some of the other decorating. So if you ever 
like aren't aren't sure of what like a double surge edge patch, which is just a whole lot of words. Um, you can just go to our website, um, go to our decoration options, and you can take a look. Right here is the Velcro with flat embroidery, the N underneath. This is for USCCA with their embroidery on a Velcro patch. Rubber patches are really nice. They turn out really well. The rubber patch is one of Brett's personal favorites. Yeah, so that's this GHC logo. So just to kind of give you an idea, um, so like here for this 47 with the New Mexico, which I'm highlighting here, underneath that patch is that 47 with the New Mexico um, embroidered out. Now that's cool. So you're saying you can put a patch over top of it, but it doesn't just have to be nothing underneath. It could be... Right. Oh, wow. Okay. I so did not. See, 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 we, learn, we learn stuff on these calls too. <laughs> um, and then here's Liquid Fusion, which is more of like that metal look that you see. Um, liquid Fusion is like colored metal. Um, liquid Metal is just the silver. Um, but yeah, so there's tons and tons so just of options. The, I'm going to nerd out for a second a little bit. So scroll back up to that one that says screen printed background. So part of the reason, and Bailey, you know a lot more about this than I do. So correct me if I get off track. But the way that they're able to do something like that, Copali, ROM, or whatever, with a screen printed background, they're screen printing the material before they build the cap. I mean, that's essentially what's happening, right? It's the only way you can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like this one, you can kind of see there's a little cut off on the leaf, but sometimes we can get better at that. Like this father-son um, bass fishing, holy bass, that one lines up almost perfect. So sometimes we can get those lines as perfect as you see with that father-son bass hat, which is right here. And then, yeah, so it's just kind of everything. So it's just kind of as nice to see some other options. What I really should do with the sea dog is show what the original artwork that we got from an example hat versus ours. Um, but that's a ton of stitches in that sea dog hat. And our embroidery, I'm, I'm also biased, but I think it's pretty great, so. Well, from what I've seen, I would have to agree. Now, one question I have in that sea bag hat or sea dog spray, um, was, was that tackle twill? Was that all embroidery or is like the yellow part an actual material? Because it almost looks. Um, nope, that's, it's all embroidery. It was like 15 or 20,000 stitches. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, and one thing I'll say to everyone um, is that we are going to really try to do a better job this year of doing, you know, kind of a follow up with the presentation that gets shown as well as links to some of those types of things. So when we post this uh, within the next week or two on our website, we'll make sure to link in some way to uh, um, those decoration methods, just in case you want to reference it. And then we'll make, and then obviously, I think you guys, everyone has seen that we do the follow up where you can see the link uh, to the recording as well as some of the assets from the presentation. Yeah. Um... But I know Landon mentioned this at the very beginning of the call. So there is there are a ton of hat options. And there are some people who just love their hat, which is awesome. But I do say, give us a try. We can sample it. And if it's a great fit, it's a great fit. And if it's not, that's okay too. Um, but we like to at least try to like get a seat at the table. So we're, we're happy to help. We try to make it as easy as possible. We do have super high compliance as well that we're happy to share too. Um, so yeah. It's kind of it's kind of all I have. I don't want to take up more time than I have, but happy to answer questions. I can't thank you enough. Just um, you've been great to work with um, on the projects even before this call. And and, and I got to give her a plug too because so her company she's she's representing Capspace with us today, but they actually represent um, uh, several other lines. Some of which there are our reps for. Some of which I maybe not. But uh, like a lot of people on this call are familiar with Storm Creek. Bailey actually is our representative for Storm Creek. Uh, they're working on a full color sublimated clothing option that we're kind of looking into uh, and, and a lot of other things. So, so Bailey is um, a great partner for us. And, and, you know, again, I, Brett and I've been talking about a lot, a lot about this lately. And I think something I'm learning is that while Goodson, you know, a lot of our, our branding and marketing talks about that uh, we, we don't want people inundated with catalogs. What we're finding is I think, you know, first line of defense for us is that we curate products, but I think what, what we've really learned is that we're really, we feel like, and we'd have to have some confirmation from our customers. We feel like we're good at curating partners. And so, um, and that's what we're doing in this case is, is coming to you and saying, hey, in the world of custom headwear, we've been, we've been up, up and down the road and seen all the options out there. And this is the one 
that we have really settled in and said, you know what, if someone comes to us with, with a custom headwear need, this is where we're going to go. Um, uh, unless there's some factor like price or lead time or whatever, where we just can't, you know, can't get the need met. So, um, Brett, I just, I want to stop. I've talked a lot today. I'm sorry, but I want to turn it over to you. I know you're a big fan as well and let you kind of, um, the Justice Kavanaugh, go ahead and comment. <laughs> no, I don't really have too much. I mean, I think Bailey did a great job. I think when you boil it all down, it really is as easy as one, two, three. And if you can dream it up, um, they can make it. Or if you can't dream it up, they can help you to dream it up and then give you a really kind of unique, cool option that nobody else is going to have. And you get a private label woven cap and you're not co-branding with a Nike or what have you. Now, there's plenty of time and space and all that stuff for that need. And we all love our name brands, but when you're looking at a promotional hat, um, sometimes it's really cool to know that like my brand is the brand. Um, so if, yeah, all good, love this, send the artwork to us. If you can't think of anything, she can kind of create some really cool renderings, create a sample. It's all going to be great. Um, and then the lead time, you know, is right now it's a little bit longer because of Chinese New Year, roughly 40 days, but I know a lot of people know that we, we sell the Richardson brand, even with Richardson with like their standard leather patch. I mean, they're coming in at around like 16, 17, $18 for 144 pieces. So going the full custom yeah, route. 12 weeks. <laughs> yeah. And they're, and they're at 12 weeks. And then the likelihood of them having stock is, is slim to none. Um, so this is a really cool way for us to kind of pivot into the custom headwear world. These guys have a, a great comparative to the Richardson 112, which is like the best cap in all of America, best selling cap in all of America. Um, and we've been looking for a comparative option to that for a long time. And Cap Space, with their custom hat, has gotten really, really close to that. Um, so we're really excited about it. They've made the process of custom hats very easy. Uh, 144 piece minimum, free shipping. That's always great. Uh, if you've got the time to wait for it and all that, then yeah, you know, let's just let, let's try it out. The one thing I did, I noticed, uh, Dad, Dad made a comment. And I, I think this is a great point. Could you expand a little bit here at the end, Bailey, on the liquid metal decoration op option? Because that is that is relatively unique and kind of how that works. I think it's probably a lot like the flex, what we call, uh, what was the thing we were doing, Brett, that we've done a few Textile of? Textile heat transfer. Flex style. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I would say our, like, so flex style heat transfers are more similar to our liquid fusion. So liquid fusion, it just, you can have color. Um, liquid metal is almost identical to that, but it only comes in silver. So wow. I, I hope that kind of helps. It's yeah. it's like a little bit more raised um, material. It kind of looks more glossy in terms of like application. That's kind yeah. of what I was wanting to know. It's limited to that silver. It's not like other metallic colors like uh, copper or gold or, is that right? Um, um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let me see if I brought this out. With me. And so it looked like, so it sounds like, you know, you kind of have silver as an option and then you can incorporate another color, I guess. Correct. So like right here, um, I shared my screen again. Um, this red logo. So the red part of this would be the liquid fusion, but then that silver on top would be the liquid metal. So you can see that the fusion is more of a matte color where the liquid metal is more of um. I don't want to use the word shiny, but it looks more like metal. <laughs> and it's look, nice. look at all those descriptive nice. words we're using today. Thank uh, you. Yeah, you're welcome. So what I would say, which to piggy, piggyback off of Landon, if you're looking for more colors, I would just go to the liquid fusion route and we can just combine them. Sorry, I don't know what my screen's doing. We could just um, combine them, but we don't have copper as of right now, but I can ask because I've never had a request for it. So let me see if we, we live in Burton Burton Country, so somebody's gonna is bound to ask for copper, right, David? <laughs> um, um, okay, so I know we're up at about 50 minutes now, which is a little bit longer than we like to go, but I hope that it's been useful. I don't want to keep anyone uh, any longer. If anyone has, hopefully I have addressed all the comments, which I'm, I'm always so appreciative when people take the time to comment or even speak up and interact. We definitely want this to be interactive. Appreciate your time. Know it's valuable. We'll be, um, this, like, as I mentioned, this is going to be recorded. We'll take the presentation and the decoration methods and incorporate those, and we'll pack all that up and send it out um, for, for obviously the folks that are here, but then those that uh, will want to look at, you know, watch this after the fact. So um, I hope everybody has a great day and a great weekend, and uh, you know where to find us if we can help you. And Bailey, thank you so much again for your time and the effort that you've put in and, and frankly, the investment that you've made in the samples that people will be getting soon.
yeah, hopefully next week. That's the goal. <laughs> um, they were supposed to come in today or Friday. So that was kind of our, our leeway for this. So hopefully you'll get them in your hands on Friday, if not the following week. But thank you so much for everyone to hop on the call and take the time. I, I really appreciate it and excited to see what we can do together. And one last thing, who day? If you Ooh. don't know, if you know, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm with Go you, Aiden. Go Bengals. What'd you say, David? I'm with you. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, it's, it's surreal for a guy like me who spent his whole life in misery getting ready to watch my team play in the AFC championship game. That's insane. The Bengals are a tough team to like. They, it, liking them builds character because you got <laughs> a lot of abuse. Both Ohio NFL teams require significant character build. Yeah. Not as bad as the Lions, though, right? Lions fans, <laughs> I feel for you. That's true. 